Hello, St. Tilo's and St. Bright's. It's wonderful to be uh, on this novena with you as we prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit this Pentecost Sunday. Thanks very much, Father Matt. My name is uh, Deacon Pascal, and myself and Father Matt, we train together in Oscott College. So it's a real blessing and privilege to be able to share something today about the fruits of the Spirit with you as we prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit and experience and afresh those graces that God in his goodness, so desires to give you and me. So the fruit that I want to speak about today is peace. And just to get myself in the right mood for the fruits of the Spirit, I had a bit of a, a fruity kickstart with the Skittles. And so peace. I asked my mother what she thinks the primary school children in her um, class would say if they were asked to describe peace. Peace. What images, thoughts or words do you think that might come to their minds? So I want to do the same thing for you. Just take a moment and um, what comes to your mind when you think that word peace? She said uh, that she thinks they would say something like rest or quiet or stillness. And I love that because... The thing about the fruits of the Spirit is they're things that we experience and we know that we, um, we know what they, that they taste like. In fact, that explains why I'm in the car today, because I was looking for a, a space of peace and quiet. I want to think about one story of the scriptures where, ironically, there is no peace, but it can be a useful way of thinking about how do we dispose ourselves for the seeds of the Spirit, so that we can experience the power of the fruits and the fruit of peace. Come with me to the 10th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, where Mary and Martha are welcoming Jesus into their house, into their home, into their hearts. And you can just picture the story. Uh, there is Martha. She goes straight into the kitchen and she is uh, boiling the rice, preparing the stew, getting the chicken ready. And then the vegetables boil over and there's a lack of peace. And so she storms out of the kitchen. Well, at least this is how I picture it. And she says, Jesus, does it not matter to you? Has it not occurred to you that my sister hasn't lifted a finger to help me? Martha is clearly not at peace. And maybe Martha describes me at times. Maybe Martha describes you at times. Not at peace. And Jesus says as much, doesn't he? He says, Martha, Martha, you worry for so many things, yet only one is necessary. Martha's not at peace with Jesus because he hasn't said anything about Mary. Martha's not at peace with Mary because Mary hasn't helped. But maybe Martha's not even at peace with herself. Thomas Merton captures this scene really well when he says, we can't be at peace with others if we're not first at peace with ourselves, And we can't be at peace with ourselves if we're not at peace with God. So it's about a right ordering in our relationships, being at right, um, being in good relationship with others. St. Augustine speaks about this sense of right order when he defines peace as the tranquility of order. I love that word tranquility. It's almost onomatopoeic, a sense of tranquil, uh, peace, that comes from, he says, order. When things are rightly ordered, the fruit of that can be peace. So maybe, Martha, if the pots and the pans and the busyness of life was in the right order, maybe that would dispose her better for peace. St. Thomas Aquinas builds on that, though, because it isn't merely about the right order, but he says it's about the right order towards union. That when we're rightly ordered to union with God, that's when we're at peace. That's when our restlessness can find rest. When they rest in God. And so, Martha could have been in the mix of all that was happening in the kitchen. And had union with God as she cut up the carrots and boiled the stew. Blessed Columba Marmion who wrote this fantastic book called The Ideal of a Monk. He said that the whole life and the works of Jesus Christ 
his death and his resurrection, all that he desired to give to us can be summed up in that one word, peace. That one word peace is what he said to his disciples in the upper room when he gave them the spirit and he said, peace be with you. In other words, I have overcome the darkness, the division, death itself. And the fruit of that is peace. Like St. Paul says, we have now been reconciled to God, who himself is our peace. If we're going to experience peace this Pentecost, it's because we have rightly ordered our lives, our hearts, our faculties, all that we can do to union with God. I mean, I like scented candles and, and soft music, and that can sometimes give me a sense of well-being. But ultimately, my heart seeks deeper down for a peace that only God can give. That's what St. Paul says, doesn't he? He says that a peace that surpasses all understanding, that is the portion of believers. One of the fruits of a life in the Holy Spirit should be that we have so experienced a union with God that we can literally radiate peace. One of the first things to go, wasn't it, after the outbreak of the virus was that we couldn't give the sign of peace to one another. But if we really have union with God, we will radiate peace to others in our smiles, our gestures, in our way of doing life. And the source of that is Christ himself. For peace is not the absence of war, but the presence of Christ. And the deeper our union with, it, with him is, the greater our sense of peace will be. I joked about uh, the Skittles in the beginning. One of my other sort of um, weak spots is biscuits. And so a friend of mine calls me the biscuit monster. And he does so because he knows, as well as I do, if you put biscuits around me, they won't be around me for very long because I'll finish them all up. And I know that when my appetites are not in right order, that can steal my peace. My eating is supposed to be for my nutrition, maybe a social thing or ultimately for the glory of God. But if I divorce my desire to eat from nutrition, its social uh, meaning and ultimately giving glory to God, then I won't experience peace. We can begin to experience peace by ordering absolutely everything in our lives, in our kitchen, so to speak, towards Jesus, so that we are serving him and loving him in the midst of what seems like many things, because we haven't got anxiety anymore. We haven't got anxiety. We've got this deep sense of we are being privileged to be united to God. It's really tough at the moment because many people can't be united to Jesus in the sacraments. But at the level of our desire, St. Thomas teaches, is where the communion happens. And the more we desire to be with him, the more uh, we meet his desire to be with us. And the fruit of that will be peace. Let's pray uh, for us to be men and women of the Spirit so that we can experience his, his peace. Heavenly Father, so close to Pentecost, we ask you to till the soil of our hearts so that they can know the deep, quiet stillness and tranquility that comes with order. Order towards fuller, truer, deeper union with you. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us.